in the previous lecture called uh, wife of bards gossip we learn about two things first is that she had a gossip mate whose name was also alison she was a close friend of wife of bard and uh, she uh, knew all the secrets that wife of bard had wife of bard revealed all her secrets to her and they had a group uh, with wife of bard that alison and wife of bard's niece uh who uh actually make the gossip group they loved gossip and that's it and the second thing is that in that uh gossip mates uh, house there came a clerk from oxford whose name was jenkin and we learn that uh later on in the prologue jenkin uh is going to become the fifth husband of wife of bath this section uh discusses how wife of bath she enchanted uh, this servant this clerk called uh, jenkin and how they first met and how their relationship began so it happened that on a time in lent for often times i to my gossip went since i loved always to be glad and gay and to walk out in march april and may so lent is in christianity lent is a 40 day period uh, which christ uh, christ spent in the desert fasting and in christianity this lent is a period of religious observance and uh, it's spent without uh, any luxury or alcohol in kind of a self denial so this is the tradition of the christian lent so uh, wife of bath is talking about this time in lent and uh, she went uh, to this uh, house of this gossip mate alison and because she loved always to be glad and gay she loved uh, wife of bath always loved to be happy and indulging and wife of bath she is at odds with this religious solemnity of the lent the solemnity the denying anything to herself this tradition of christian christianity uh, that's associated with uh, this uh, period of lent uh, kind of doesn't suit wife of bath and she loved to go out during this time during this march april and may uh, this is the season of spring and the season of spring in britain is a period of beauty uh, energy indulgence and renewal so Uh, in such a time uh, wife of bath wouldn't uh, practice that religious solemnity of the uh, of the land she would rather go to gossip uh, she would rather indulge herself so what we learn from here is that uh, sexuality uh, wife of bath represents this sexuality that is natural while religion is uh, something that is processed and enforced by man so wife of bath will always be at odds with religion when christianity when christian people are uh, are uh, kind of maintaining that religious solemnity called the lent wife of bath is uh, like she is all about herself she is going for gossip she is meeting new men from house to house to hear the latest malice jenkin the clerk and my gossip dame alice and i myself into the meadows went so this three people jenkin the clerk who will let her go on to be wife of bath's fifth husband uh, wife of bath's gossip mate alison and uh, wife of bath herself they go from house to house they go for the latest gossip and they also go on to walk in the meadows my husband was in london all that lent i had the greater leisure then to play and to observe and to be seen i say by pleasant folk what new i wear my face was destined to be loved or in what place so the greatest opportunity was that wife of bath's husband the fourth husband till now was alive so that husband was in london during that time so when the husband is not at home that presented wife of bath with all that opportunity for greater greater leisure and that opportunity to play and to observe and to be seen by pleasant folk and they she is going out to the meadows with jenkin with uh, her gossip mate so that uh, she can be seen by other attractive men 
and she wants to make uh, this availability uh, known to these attractive people that the thing that she is married doesn't really bother her what knew i where my face was destined to be loved or in what place so she's taking her chances you never know who ends up falling in love with whom or you don't know uh, you end up falling in love with someone so it's all about luck and you don't know where your luck will lead you to so she is taking her chances she is going out she is meeting new people when her husband is not at home she uh, he is out of the out of the town and wife of bath actually desires to be loved uh, because uh, this love she is something she didn't receive from her fourth husband as uh, she tells her in the pre- uh, tells us in the previous section that uh the fourth husband he loved very scantily although wife of bath actually loved this fourth husband therefore i made my visits round about to vigils and processions of devout to preaching to and shrines of pilgrimage to miracle place and always to each marriage so wife of bath she went to parties she went to banquets processions and marriages she went everywhere she could she also went to religious pre- preachings and to shrines and pilgrimages like she is now in one pilgrimage she has told us that she also went to jerusalem she also went to miracle place uh, if you remember your history miracle and mystery place were the earliest form of plays and they were based on biblical stories lives of saints so and these places this pilgrimage uh, or these uh, religious preachings and these miracle plays these are actually religious places but even religious meetings and gatherings are scope for meeting new people and wife of bath understands this she goes to these religious programs for her secular needs so that she could meet new people and maybe if she meets some attractive men even in a religious program she could uh, take her chances with them so it also tells us that this pilgrimage uh, the one which she is going on about now the pilgrimage to uh, uh, canterbury with uh, the other pilgrims to the shrine of st thomas becket this might be also not for some religious purpose for her it actually might have some secular needs because now the fifth husband is also dead so we might interpret this to be this pilgrimage this current pilgrimage uh, to the canterbury that wife of bath might she might be taking her chances even in this pilgrimage that's what uh, made her take this pilgrimage and wore my scarlet skirt before all which these worms and all these moths and all these mites i say it at my peril never ate and you know why i wore it early and late so all these places these uh, marriages these possessions these parties banquets and even in these religious gatherings even in the miracle plays she or she always wore her beautiful scarlet dress and you can understand that the one scarlet dress is not meant to be worn at every place even in a religious place and a secular place like a marriage or a banquet or any possession but she always wore that scarlet dress and she tells that she wore it so often that worms and moths never had the chance to destroy that silk or that fabric she wore it very often because she wanted always to look this uh, charming beautiful in that dress the color scarlet has some important uh, some specific connotations here a color imagery scarlet is a brilliant bright red color and it symbolizes this passion for life symbolizes vigor and energy scarlet is uh, and these uh, passion for life vigor and energy actually describe wife of bath this color suits wife of bath this color of scarlet it actually suits the personality of wife of bath but scarlet is also very often associated with lust uh, sexual immorality adultery or sin 
so in that way it is also kind of a premonition because wife of bath was always wearing this dress that she was trying to uh, participate in kind of a sexual immorality because uh, her husband her fourth husband was still alive and she is already looking for other men now will i tell you what befell to me i say that in the meadows walked we three till truly we had come to such dalliance this clerk and i that of my vigilance i spoke to him and told him how that he were i a widow might well marry me so three of them walked the three of us wife of bath alison the gossip maid and jenkin the clerk they walked they were walking in the meadows and they were having a very delightful conversations and of course they were flirting with each other while uh, and at that time wife of bath told uh, jenkin the clerk that if she were a widow Uh, she could marry him and uh, jenkin could marry her for certainly i say it not to brag but uh, i was never quite without a bag full of the needs of marriage that i seek i hold a mouse's heart not worth a leek that has but one hole into which to run and if it fail of that then all is done so wife of bath is uh, very forward and she takes matter in her own hands there is nothing like the men should come first when it comes to wife of bath she knows that she needs men and she is the first to take the first step and although her fourth husband uh, is still living she is clearly taking her chances with jenkin the clerk and she says that i don't want to brag but i was always this expert when it comes to relationships and marriage she has this this prudence and this is because uh, she is always in need of the pleasures of marriage and that is why she keeps on taking her chances with with five marriages and so forward in every marriage and she compares this with the heart of a mouse and she says that a mouse which only has one hole as a shelter is only seeking trouble because if that hole gets blocked the mouse gets exposed he it 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 has nowhere to go so wife of bath although her fourth husband is still alive she is looking for a backup and that backup is this jenkin the clerk she is taking her chances with this man so that if her husband leaves or the husband dies she'll not be denied these pleasures of marriage she is already trying to create a backup and that's how she is i made him think that he had enchanted me my mother taught me all that subtlety and then i said i dreamt of him all night he would have slain me as i lay upright and all my bed was full of very blood but yet i hoped that he would do me good for blood betokens gold as i was taught so she is clearly flirting with jenkin and trying to make jenkin fall for her and uh, she says that i made jenkin believe that he had really enchanted me and uh, i made him believe that i have so fallen in love with him but this was all the art of flirting and it was taught uh, to me by my mother wife of bath's mother taught her this art of the the women's art all these deceit all these uh, art of flattery all this flirt and i told him that i dreamt about him every night it's it's very romantic that uh, she dreams about jenkin every night and then she says that i dreamed uh, that jenkin came upon my bed and slain me and the sheets were drenched with blood slain me as i lay all my bed with full of very blood so first of all this dream has a very sexual overtone and this is uh, an image of a violent love making but it's too violent uh, for that but this also has a dramatic irony uh, because 
this dream although it never happened and wife of bath uh, says in just the next line that she is only making up these dreams this wife of bath laying upright and jenkin uh, slaying her and spilling the blood also becomes a kind of dramatic irony it becomes a premonition of the domestic violence that will happen in her marriage with jenkin but wife of bath also told uh, him that this is actually not violent and negative but this dream is kind of a good omen because blood signify gold for some reason in medieval times and all was false i dreamt of him just not say why acted on my mother's lore and dwell in this things and many more so wife of bath says that actually there was no dream as such it was just a made up lie and she is trying to flirt with jenkin and she is trying to make jenkin believe that she actually has fallen in love with him so that jenkin also falls for her and she says that my mother taught me this art of flirting with men and make men fall for me and many more things so medieval mothers we can assume that medieval mothers were teaching their daughters that their lives are only revolved around men because women at that time they didn't have proper education they couldn't own property so a women's life only heavily depended on men although wife of bath is trying to break the tradition and she kind of uh, kind of uh, takes uh, makes herself that woman who doesn't really need the attention of men to actually survive in life but apart from all her plans and apart for, from all her shrewdness this is what she is going on doing because she is trying to make men fall for her the first category was uh, old rich men and uh, there were three or four of them and now she has the money and now again she is looking for another man so her life actually revolved around men although she keeps denying her that so it kind of tells us about the condition of women in medieval times where mothers were teaching their daughters to this subtle art of flattery and flirting and the women's weapons like deceit and acting and false tears so and they telling uh, their daughters that their lives revolved around men so wife of bath says that all these arts she has learned from her mother so that's this section uh, we'll continue again with the next